Hey guys, Brad from SimpleGuitar.com here. Don't mind my voice, I'm still kind of getting over a cold. But today, we're gonna jump back into Guitar Pro 8 and I'm gonna show you something that when I get guitar profiles off the internet and I'm looking for songs for students or for myself to learn, there's one really annoying thing that too many guitar players are doing. So today I'm gonna show you how to have multiple different guitar sounds in one file, uh, one track in Guitar Pro, okay? What I usually see happen is people have a clean guitar part that has its own track, right? So you can see that all by itself on one page. And then they have a distortion track that's a whole other track created separately and it's rests all during the clean part and then it's the distortion part and then rests during the clean part. And the clean part is the opposite. It's It shows you what to play during the clean part then it's rests during all the distortion. I'm gonna show you how you can simply combine those and have all of it in one and still have it sound right. So let's dive right into Guitar Pro and look at this right away. Okay, so here we are in Guitar Pro. Now normally when we're in here, uh, we're gonna look right up here at the top left corner where we've got our three different panes that we can bring up, okay? So we've got the left side, we've got the bottom, and we've got the right side, okay? Now when you're looking at this, and you look at the bottom pane, this lists all the different tracks within the uh, within the song, okay? So, for example, this is Dilemma by Green Day that I was tabbing out for a previous video, and I started tabbing out some of the other stuff for it too, like the drums, um, which we're going to do a whole other video on how to properly uh, tab out drums. Uh, that's a whole other can of worms, but... What normally happens, I went and found one on in my files here. So check this out. This is Stay Together for the Kids by Blink-182. Great song. And you'll see right here at the beginning of this, you've got, um, you've got Guitar 1. And then below that, you've got Guitar 2. And you can see uh, how where you've got the red here. Uh, you can see that's Guitar 1 playing. And then you can see Guitar 2 playing. And then it switches back and forth mainly. So we're going between here. Guitar one is your clean sound. And then if I jump to guitar two, where it starts in the chorus, that's the distortion, right? However, you don't have to separate your parts by the sound of the guitar, okay? Now, a lot of people will do this just because they aren't aware of what, what I'm going to show you today, okay? Um, so what I did, uh, let's do this. Actually, let's do this. Let's create a whole new guitar track. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make this electric guitar. I'm going to make it clean, okay? So the clean will be the default sound. And I'm going to hit OK on that. So now this is blank. So what I want to do is I want to come over here to Guitar 1. I'm going to hit Command all or control all to select everything and then i'm going to copy that and then i'm going to go to the new track and i'm going to hit paste now i'm just using on a mac use command c command v for copy or paste i think it's alt or control right for windows i don't use windows so i wouldn't know but it's alt or control um anyway so now i have a new track like like that and I'm going to go to Guitar 2. And what I want to do is I want to highlight where I don't have Guitar 1 happening. And then I'm going to highlight the same area in my other track, which you can do this. <coughs> you can do this in that bottom pane just by selecting the measures. Each square is a measure in the music. And so if I highlight those measures and then I hit paste, then I've just pasted the dirty part the distorted part right and so i can go through and i can go okay i've got my dirty guitar part right there and so i'm going to copy that and i'm going to come down here and i'm going to paste it and then i'm going to copy the guitar part here and then i'm going to paste it down here in the same place where it's missing see so as i go through this you can see that now i'm taking all of this and combining it into one track so now when you see it, you see the clean part. And this is just going to go through the rest of the song nice and easy. So I'm going to mute these other ones, okay? Right? And 
and that's going to sound good. But then when we get to the chorus and it's supposed to be distorted, I'm still going to have a clean sound. Which we don't want that right now. That's going to sound all sorts of goofy. So here is the solution. Okay, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to come over to the right pane. And in the right pane, it says song and it says track. I'm going to click on track. And down here, it says sound. Now, right now, there's only one sound set up here. There's the clean strat sound, and that's what we're using for the clean sound, okay? But I want to set up another sound that is going to be distortion so that when that chorus kicks in, it switches and it uses distortion. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit plus, and that's going to add a sound. And I'm just going to go to electric guitars, distortion guitar, and I'm just going to hit distortion. You can actually go through and... Try out all the different sounds and see how you want it to be. You can go in and manipulate it. Like if I click on this right here, this is going to pull up the sound bank for different guitars. Like this is just a Les Paul. You can pick different stuff. Uh, you can pick different effects, what your effects chain is, all of that. Okay, you can show the pedal board. You can bring all this up. You can really get detailed with this. But for me, when I'm doing this, I'm not doing this to recreate the recording like I would if I were just recording this into Logic or Pro Tools or whatever, okay? For me, this is purely just reference, so I don't expect anything to be 100% uh, perfect, okay? You can nerd out with all that. That's If you want to, that's your thing, okay? So check this out, though. Now I've got these two sounds, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to come right here to the beginning of the chorus, and actually I'm going to highlight the chorus right here, and then I'm going to hit A right here which is open sound automations dialog. And I'm gonna hit add automation at the cursor. And I want it to add the distortion, right? Actually, you know what, cancel that just one second. I'm gonna just put it right here. Rather than highlighting, let's just put it right there, okay? I'm gonna hit add that. I'm gonna do distortion. So now in bar seven, position one, it's gonna to switch to that distortion and I'm gonna hit okay. And you'll see right there in the score, right under the chorus, it says distortion. Then I'm going to come down to the beginning of the intro part right here where it switches back to clean. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to hit the A over here for the automation dialog. I'm going to add an automation and go back to clean. Okay. And so it's telling me what bar, what position. All right. So now check this out. I've got the clean guitar part happening during the verse right here. <laughs> I'm just going to let this play for a second because it has to repeat this twice and then we're going to go into the chorus and I'm going to show you how now it's going to automatically switch the sound from being this clean sound to being the distortion that we want to hear in the chorus and all I had to do was add that little bit of automation with a new sound and we're going to get this right here. Here's your distortion. Right? And if I let that keep going like here, let's just jump in at the end of the chorus here, and it's going to go back into the intro. And there you go. So that is how you set up a track to have multiple different sounds. You can do this with as many different sounds as you want, okay? And it's just going to label in the thing what the sound is, whether it's distortion whether it's clean, whatever the sound that you pick, it's just going to say in here, you're going to have that. The reason why this can get so frustrating is because I will have student bands playing songs like this and whoever created the file didn't put the parts together, even though clearly like in Blink-182, for example, there's only one guitar player. It's Tom, right? And he's switching from a clean sound to a dirty sound, right? It's not like two separate guitar players playing separate things. And so... When you have it separated like that, it makes it a big pain in the butt when you're trying to read the music and you're trying to put things together and play along. So we'll have bands, we'll print out the music for them, and we'll have be like, oh, here's the clean part, oh, here's the dirty part. But then now we can combine it. And that makes it a lot easier because everything's all in one place. And we can just say, click the distortion on here, go clean here. And it makes it so much easier. Now, just for another example, I did this in, I just recently did Dilemma by Green Day. And so here is the clean, which this sound is this new sound. 
So I use the blue sound for that, and then the distortion kicks on in the chorus right here. So you'll hear this. We'll go clean. <laughs> distortion kicks in right where it should be right so it's a lot of fun and it makes your life a lot easier because you're not i mean it's a pain in the butt to just create multiple tracks and only have part of the song and create a new track and have part of the song and create a new track and have part of the song right because here's the thing in here i could be in the bridge and i could have a third totally different guitar sound i could have something with tremolo going on or some crazy other chorus effect or delay effect or something and rather than creating a whole new track and sheet music to just have that one part i can have it right here in the same file on the same track and just have the program change the sound so quick review come over to the track on the right side of the window come down to sounds i I have found I have to have it switched to RSE, to the, the real sound engine, not MIDI. Um, and then you add whatever sound you want by clicking the plus sign to add a sound. And then you put your cursor where you want that sound change to happen. And you click on the A and you click add automation at the cursor and you choose which one you want at that cursor, right? So... I hope that was helpful for you. If you have any other questions about this, let me know down in the comments. So there you go, guys. I hope that was helpful for you. Now, when you are getting Guitar Pro parts and you don't want multiple pages of different things for just one part that just is played with distortion or without distortion, or with different sounds, you know what I mean? Now, that should be a lot easier for you to combine those different things, still have it sound correctly, and you can use this when you're creating your own stuff too. So I hope that was good for you. If it was, let me know down in the comments and let me know what other questions you have about Guitar Pro 8 and how to use it. Otherwise, if you want something to help you learn guitar, I have another gift for you as well. If you've not gotten this already, it's at my website. It's called the Top 10 Things to Learn on Guitar First. And it's 10 things that I teach beginners all the time that give them a lot of bang for their buck so that they can actually get playing real music faster on the guitar. So go to simpleguitar.com slash top 10, put in your email address. I'll send that out to you. You can unsubscribe anytime you want to. Uh, otherwise, I'll just send you more stuff to help you with your guitar playing. Thanks again for watching today. Go pick up your free guide and now use this to make some multi-sound tracks in Guitar Pro and I will catch you in the next lesson.